Come here, Alexa. Our women's wrestling figure prayers have finally been answered. And we got a women's fig in glittery metallic paint. Finally. I just don't get why you care so much about the glitter and paint application of the women's figures. Because tons of the women have the flash and detail of metallic, glossy, glittery fabric in their attires. And I don't see why it hasn't been done so much in the past as far as paint application goes. It would really make these women's wrestling figures even more amazing. Don't you think you take it too far with the whole glitter thing? Too far, Comer Alexa? <laughs> Ain't no such thing. I guess I just, uh, guess I just like glitter. Hey, uh, Comer Alexa. What, Mayor Aaron? Hey y'all, welcome to Lumber Joville. Women's Wrestling lives here. Today, we're going to be reviewing the long-awaited basic series, 117 Tony Storm. Both versions. So that being said, let's take a closer look. So even mint on card, these figures look awesome. And what's really great about series 117 is it picks up where 113 started and 116 left off and included yet another first-in-the-line NXT female superstar. And if you know how much I really love the NXT women's division, then you understand why I appreciate that so much. So it is exciting to finally get a Tony Storm figure. Now, these are basics, so the packaging, I just whoop, go off to the side. It, it's really nothing that special. It's got a photo of her and then the figure, but honestly, these figures look cool. So let's open them up and get a closer look. We're going to start off with the regular version on the left, and then we're going to go to the more iconic red attire in her chase. Basic Series 117 Tony Storm regular version. The attire is from the first NXT of 2020, which took place on January 8th, where she teamed up with Rhea Ripley and Candice LeRae to defeat Bianca Belair, Io Shirai, and Kaylee Ray. So the first thing we're going to cover is her face scan, and it is the same on both figures, so we're just going to cover it once, but... I'll be honest, this scan freaking rules. I mean, it looks just like her. And honestly, Mattel's been killing it on the women's scans lately. They've been doing awesome on them. And I love how unique this is to Tony. And honestly, it looks identical to her from all angles. So what I also love is the obvious inclusion of the eye black under that right eye. I mean, they had to do that. But a little detail that I love that they added is her blonde hair sculpt there has little black streaks Kind of on the under layer, I mean if you peel it back, there isn't any black, but just from the appearance on the front, it's got those black streaks and it looks awesome. Honestly, it looks great. So, this face scan to me, I mean I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 is what I'm going to do, but now, next let's move on to her attire. So we finally got glitter paint, y'all. I know that sounds silly and I covered it in the intro, but... I've mentioned it before but that if they would add that glitter, metallic, glossy, whatever it may be, paint application to these women's figures, it would make them so much more accurate and really put them over the top. So they did a great job here. And it is that bluish gray type color. It is hard for me to tell. That is a color that is very difficult for me because I'm colorblind. But it looks great and it's definitely glossy and shiny. Also, I understand that the women's basics are kind of a victim to a lot of cost cutting measures over the last couple years. And to be honest with you, I don't mind it as long as the paint application has detail in it. You know, if they do a good job with the paint application, they've shown that they can still make awesome women's basics, and this is no different. I mean, they do a great job painting on this top. It's got that black area in the middle with little silver accents. We go to the back. They even have a little buckle hanging down there. On her left hand, she has this glove with a tattoo on her forearm. And on her right forearm, she has that tattoo. And then in the lower extremity, we do have a molded belt, and then the shorts are painted on. But it is important to note that these legs are unique to her. 
And this is a superstar that, you know, Rhea Ripley, they use tiny, tiny legs and it looks silly. It would have looked really silly with Tony because she has very strong legs and they do a great job. Another thing on the legs is a lot of the prototype images had the legs being a darker shade than the rest of the body. And here it's not that noticeable, but I have to say this. I have to put a disclaimer out there and say that is simulating pantyhose. That basic 106 Carmella that came out, people were complaining about the legs being different colors than the rest of the body, but that's to simulate the pantyhose. So it looks like it might be a little darker on this, but it's really hard to tell. But that's that's all it simulates, so no worries. But this is a great version of Tony Storm. Now let's move to the chase. Basic Series 117 Tony Storm Chase version. The attire is from her quarterfinal match of the 2018 Mae Young Classic, which aired on October 17th, where she defeated Mia Yim to advance to the semifinals for the second year in a row. She wore this attire in the semifinal match also, where she defeated Maiko Satamura, which aired on October 24th. It's important to note she went on to win the Mae Young Classic that year, beating Io Shirai in the finals. So this red attire to me, and probably to a lot of people, is the more iconic Tony Storm attire, and I absolutely love this. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is it is hard to tell. The other one was very obvious in its metallic paint application, and this is hard to tell, but if you look close, it almost has like a red lipstick finish, if that makes sense, to where it's a little shimmery, a little shine, and it looks awesome. You'd really have to hold it in hand to appreciate it, in my opinion, I think. Now, the top is painted a little higher to make it accurate. Also, she has a black collar painted on with silver intricate details, red straps on the back. She has wrist tape painted on this time around, and she doesn't have her hand painted on this figure. However, because of that, we get her thumb tattoo exposed. And her lower extremity, she has that molded belt on the front. And I actually thought that this detail was molded on, but they did just such a great job painting it. So I had to refilm this because I was like, great molding on the belt. And then I kind of stopped myself. So they did an awesome job painting that. Even this little black, you know, pocket type simulation on the back is painted on, but it looks great. And the legs here, this is very difficult for me to tell people. But the legs here might be a little bit of a different shade than the rest of the body. Being colorblind, I can't tell. But even if it is, I, I love when they actually make the legs a darker color because it does simulate that pantyhose, but I really can't tell. So you'll have to let me know in the comments if it is a little darker. I apologize. The knee pads are just regular knee pads that are red. Now the boots are awesome because they're red boots with black kick pads on the front. But like I said, I never mind that there's not a lot of molding when they put attention to detail in the paint and they knock this one out of the park. And I love that that red is like a lipstick type shade. And here's one last look at Basic Series 117, Tony Storm. Overall, I give Basic Series 117 Tony Storm, both the regular and the chase versions, an easy 10 out of 10. I know that seems like a high score, but I do put basics on a different scale than the elites. And as far as basics go, especially basic women's figures, they knock this out of the park. The paint application, the inclusion of the glittery type paint, the face scan, the hair sculpt, the little additional detail, the black in there. I mean... This, to me, is what a perfect basic is. And this is what I hope is a bright future to come as far as the women's basics because they showed that even with the cost-cutting measures, not a whole lot of molding, they can really knock it out of the park. Thanks for stopping by Lumber Joeville. Women's wrestling lives here. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, and join the community for a first look at all future women's wrestling figures. Also, make sure to check out the Treasure Nice podcast, Lumber Joe Cast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Have a good night, y'all.